I am Amy Maris, and welcome to Poudre School District's Living History. I attend Olander Elementary, and today's host, and I am today's host for a visit with Mrs. Lopez and Tom Lopez um, to learn more about people for whom schools have been named after. Um, um, you are. How, what is your relation to Mr. Lopez? I am um, Bill Lopez's wife, mm -hmm. Delphine, and. And I am his youngest son, uh, Tom. And um, you are the, the assistant principal at Blevins Junior High? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have two other sons, uh, Bill and Bob. Okay. Two sons. Um, we'll begin by asking um, Dale to tell us a little bit about themselves and what, they, and what are you currently doing. Well, I am retired, have been retired from uh, the school district for almost seven years. And I do quite a bit of traveling, and I'm out on the golf course almost every day. And um, what is life like for you? Well, um, this is my sixth year as assistant principal of Blevins Junior High School. And before that, I was a teacher of science at Weber Junior High School and also at Wellington Junior High School. So my career is in education, and that's pretty much what I want to stay doing. Okay. Um, how did you feel when Mr. Lopez w had the school named after him? Highly el elated um, and just really emotionally um, honored. Mm -hmm. It was such a great feeling. And what was it like for you when he was, when the school was named after him? Well, first of all, I think it's a, it's a gift that the school district honors uh, former educators. And um, for my father to be honored, um, and also to be a part of this community for such a long time and, and now going to be a part of the community for whoever knows how long that school is going to exist. Uh, it's a fantastic honor. Um, we're very proud as a family and uh, we certainly agree that they made a great choice. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Um, why do you think he was chosen for this honor? <clears throat> you know, he had so many wonderful qualities. Um, very soft-spoken person. I think his compassion, his dignity, his respect. Um, he was a down-to-earth person. Um, his love, I think, for all humanity. I think uh, I, as an educator, uh, he, he taught at Fort Collins High School for many years and at Poudre High School. Uh, he was uh, head of um, the foreign language department of both schools as, also, as well as for the entire school district. And uh, he was extremely dedicated to his job. He loved youth. He loved teenagers particularly, high school age. Um, he uh, found lots of energy to do lots of things even beyond being a teacher. He, f he directed uh, Junior Red Cross and Spanish Club, which were very, very popular, uh, especially in the 50s uh, and early 60s at Fort yes. Collins High School. Um, he just enjoyed people, and that's pretty much what he dedicated his life to. So he must have been a really incredible person. I think he went <laughs> beyond call of duty. Mm -hmm. um, just that type of person. Do you visit the school that was named after your? Yes, I do. Um, I go out there not as often perhaps as I should, but um, I've been out there and I've spoken to their student body a few times. I've gone out there and I've taught Spanish to, to some of their grades. And um, I've um, helped them do a little bit of cooking once in a while. And um, this evening we're having uh, the annual dinner uh, empty bowl, mm -hmm. which is a real good um, um, project for the food bank and um, we're really looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. They're doing ter terrific things uh, at Lopez. My, my mother um, is very encouraging to their staff. Uh, she goes often. We, we're, mm -hmm. we're oftentimes involved with uh, just um, hopefully encouraging the teachers that are there and the students. Um, we try not to uh, go there too often to take away from what they're doing at Lopez Elementary, but we certainly 
take our friends there and people that we know. We're very proud of uh, having this school named after my dad. And so, um, sure, we take as many people that have never seen the school to Lopez Elementary as we can. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> could you trace your father's teaching and education trace? Well, uh, my mom could probably do that better than me, but I'll try. I'll start out a little bit. Uh, my father was a graduate of Colorado A&M. Uh, and um, he then was hired at Fort Collins High School. This is uh, originally known as the Fort Collins School District. And he was hired as a Spanish teacher, and he taught many levels of Spanish at Fort Collins High School. Um, the length of time he was there, my mother would know, but I don't. But my father was, uh, became director of foreign languages for the school district later on. And when Poudre High School was ready to open, he was hired at Poudre High School uh, to not only teach Spanish, in fact, there were five levels of Spanish at Poudre High School at that time, and he was also uh, the district foreign language director. Um, so that, that sort of is his uh, career in Fort Collins School District, Poudre School District. Yeah, he was um, hired mm -hmm. by Dr. Um, Lesher. David Lesher, who was the superintendent at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, he happened to really do uh, or know what Bill had been doing and how busy he had been doing, and he was the first Mexican-American uh, to be um, chosen to teach for the Fort Collins schools, which is, I think, a big plus here. Mm -hmm. um, were children different um, then from now? Um, I think that um, we didn't have uh, uh, the gangs or anything, I don't think that we have now, but I think that they were um, very studious. Um, I, I don't know that, uh, that children have really ever changed that much as far as, uh, as education is concerned, those that are interested in going. I don't think that we had as many Mexican-Americans finishing school as uh, today. Um, and hopefully that, uh, that uh, it will continue this way, you know, that children will be much more interested in, in getting their education because it is such an important part of their life. I think, uh, I, I truly believe the students have uh, the same basic values, and, uh, and I think if my father was here, he would say that uh, uh, you treat individuals with the golden rule, and you, get re you earn respect, you gain respect, uh, my dad was very much uh, uh, a proponent of honesty and trust, and uh, he, was, he was the type of individual that was honest, and he could gain your trust, and it didn't matter what kind of background you came from. Mm -hmm. um, he was intelligent, he was a very articulate man, great, great sense of humor. You talk to anybody about him, that's probably the thing that helped him the most. He could help uh, any type of student no matter your background, and uh, he made, uh, I think he was a hero of every type of student. Mm -hmm. Just a real life of the party, <clears throat> always. Um, has after school activities changed from then and now? I think that um, perhaps not a whole lot. I think that children are still doing their activities. Um, Um, I'm not sure that there has been that much of a difference or a change. Probably, probably the only change I see is that clubs, high school clubs were probably more, uh, they were more participated in uh, when my father was in, was a teacher at, certainly at Fort Collins High School. Uh, he had uh, tremendous enrollment of students. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, even students that were not in Spanish and even students that uh, uh, that were hoping to get in his classes still participated in the clubs that he led. Uh, he created something known as a Junior Red Cross, which was a service organization in the high school. And what they, uh, what they were famous for was presenting uh, these very large Christmas talent shows, which uh, not only were presented to the school 
for I think admission might be canned food or, or something like that. So my father collected all these gifts, and of course he took them to charities. He also took uh, these this Fort Collins High School talent to um, many places uh, to perform for senior citizens, to perform for the physically um, disabled, and, and so forth. So um, this was a very popular uh, event and the, and the clubs then were uh, a center point for extracurricular activities for students. And also the uh, during well right after the war and he was already a, a sponsor of Junior Red Cross they would t he would take um, buses bus loads of children that were in his um, classes to Cheyenne to entertain the GIs who had been wounded in the service and also he would also take um, bus loads to State Ridge uh, in Denver, and um, each um, individual would have a, have a job to do, a chore for that uh, particular day, uh, feeding and cleaning and just helping out uh, the children there. Um, has the discipline changed from then and now? Well, yes and no, I think. Uh, uh, there has always been, um, at that time, I don't know, um, even when I was teaching, I didn't see that uh, there was much uh, of, a, of a job in, in disciplining children. They were uh, very interested in school, and uh, we had very little problems, or if any, you know. And I don't know about today's uh, uh, school children, but I think there, there is probably a lot more. I think, the, I think it has changed. I think um, uh, students back then when my dad was teaching uh, were uh, responsible. Their parents were very involved in their families. Um, maybe they came from situations where uh, uh, their, their both parents were together. Um, that might be a difference. I would have to say that maybe the discipline concerning the way my father uh, interacted with students was he was, um, he was one that truly cared about the students. So as far as the way he dealt with discipline, he really wasn't one of those teachers that uh, seemed to have a lot of discipline problems. But he was very demanding. I, my brothers and myself were also students of my father. We took his Spanish classes at Poudre High School, and I can tell you he was a very demanding teacher, not just to his sons, but to everyone. So there was a certain amount he was able to gain a certain amount of respect and also achievement. Uh, people that got in his classes really wanted to learn Spanish. They were uh, they loved the cultures that were being presented. Um, my mother and my father are tremendous cooks, so they would learn uh, they would learn uh, s certain foods, and uh, and so it was. It was a cultural experience. So as far as discipline was concerned, he involved students in what they were doing. And he had a sense of humor. He had a real and, sense of humor. And uh, that seemed to disarm students. He had motivated might, yeah, kids motivated. also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had uh, children in our house all, over and over and over again wanting to learn how to cook. So we'd open up the whole house and mm -hmm. children would always come in. Mm -hmm. Where did you live and grow up while your father was an educator? Okay. Uh, uh, on Sherwood Street. It's in the older part of town. My mother still lives there, 229 North Sherwood. Um, I pretty much know that neighborhood. Uh, Fort Collins, I've, obviously we've seen it grow. Uh, so uh, having been, been born in 1953, uh, I sort of have that much uh, experience as to what Fort Collins has looked like since. So. Um, it was a wonderful place to grow up. I went to, my schools that I went to was Laporte Avenue Elementary, and then I went to Lincoln Junior High, which is now the Lincoln Center, and I graduated in 1971 from Poudre High School. I graduated from the University of Colorado uh, with a biological sciences degree in 1977, and I graduated from the University of Northern Colorado with a master's in educational administration later in 1990. So. Mm -hmm. um, where did um, you work? Where did I work? Yeah. I was um, a teacher's aide at Tavelli, Tavelli Elementary for 24 years, and then I went to Timnath for the last three, and then I retired. Mm, what have you been doing before you um, were the 
as principal at Pleasant. Okay. Um, at Wellington Junior High School, I was the science department. And uh, when I first started there, I was the only science teacher. I taught all the classes of junior high science and some seventh grade math. I coached girls softball and boys wrestling. Um, and I was there for about 14 years. I then transferred to Weber Junior High School when Weber was opening. And I was hired to be the science department head. And I taught introduction to chemistry and physics and bio biology. And, uh, Enjoyed that immensely. That was quite an experience for me. So I went from the small, small rural setting to uh, a larger uh, setting, a larger school inside Fort Collins. And uh, I liked that a lot. I was interested in becoming an administrator uh, simply because I wanted to impact more students and, and learning in a larger setting. And so I, I started investigating what it would take to become a, um, a principal. And I started my uh, education in that manner. And eventually, I became certified. So uh, I did try uh, to become assistant principal in other locations. And fortunately enough, uh, Blevins Junior High School took a risk on me, and they hired me. And, and I've enjoyed being there very much for the last six years. OK, it was very nice having you here. And I learned a lot about mm. the history of Fort Collins. Well, thank well, you thank very thank much you. for inviting us it's here It's an honor to be here. Mm. Hello, I am Ashley Benavides, and welcome to Poudre School District's Living History. I attend Olander Elementary, and am today's host for a visit with the Olanders to learn more about the people for whom schools have been named after. Today's guests are Eleanor Olander and John Olander. We'll begin by asking Mr. Olander to tell us a bit about himself and what he is currently doing. Well, right now I'm uh, principal of Lincoln Junior High School. Uh, I've been part of this district. This is my 30th year in the district. So I guess uh, education kind of runs in the family a little bit. Uh, and uh, started my career in uh, Poudre School District at Lincoln Junior High School. And that was in 1970 uh, when I had uh, come back from California. I taught a couple years in California and then came back here in 1970. And been here ever since and have been at uh, Fort Collins High School and then went back to Lincoln Junior High for the last uh, four years. Three of those have been principal at Lincoln. How did you feel when the school was named after you and Lefty? I thought they'd lost their mind. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think he was chosen for this honor? Why do you think you were chosen for the honor that you and father got uh, a school named after you? Well, I probably got it because he, was, he did a lot of outstanding work here for the school well, I think, I think, Yeah, and I think some of that, too, uh, if I may, if I'm not interrupting, but um, I think she's being pretty modest about it. When she started her uh, teaching career, um, she taught for 27 years in the district and at different elementary schools. And um, she was the first to put in the physical education uh, curriculum in the elementary schools. Uh, she also helped uh, invent the, uh, the elementary track meet that you all have now. And so she was part of actually developing some of the, uh, the curriculum that you now have in elementary schools. Do you ever visit the school that was named after you? Do you visit the school? Do you, have you been over to the school? How many times have you been there and what have you seen? I don't know. About four or five times, probably. I think you've been over there probably four or five times. How did you like the school? OK. Could you trace your teaching history and educational background for us? I went to college in Greeley. Colorado Teaching College? No, it didn't say teaching. Educational. Educational college? When, when did you uh, start teaching in the district? Where did you teach in the district? Do you remember? In the district here? Uh-huh. Started what, Harmony School? Yeah. Were children different in your teaching time? Were children different teaching then, do you, or do you think they're different now to teach? No, I don't think so. Did the class sizes change? 
Have your class sizes changed? Do you think there's more in classes now? Or do you think that you had more in your classes now? There's probably about, uh, what do you have in your class, about 30? There'd be more in their classes now than they were then. Has clothing changed? Mm, doesn't make too much difference. They're dressed. <laughs> <laughs> Has the role for girls changed, like in what? jobs? Has the role for girls changed? You think there's much difference? Imagine so. What, what difference do you think it is? Well, they have more freedom now than men to talk. What are your memories from Fort Collins now? Well, the, they built more schools. And where we used to live on uh, Shields Street was way out in the country. Wasn't mm -hmm. any paved roads out there on Shields and Lake, right behind Barton? No, there were paved roads, just one. <laughs> Little one? Yeah, because when, when we bought that out there, we were living in the country. We were living in the country. <laughs> we, had, we had a family, and so I like to have them out in the country. <laughs> Has homework changed? Like, is there more homework now than then? Did you give homework out? Did you have the students do homework at home when you were teaching? Did or what? Did you give the students homework to do when you were teaching? Oh, yeah, they had homework. How much? Well, I don't know. Can't remember? Not a whole lot. Has discipline changed? The parents went right along with what you would want. Do you think they do today? I don't know. <laughs> you haven't been in the classroom for a while. Has the music changed? How about the music? You think the music changed from when you first started teaching the music uh, that they listen to to today? Not much. Don't you? What kind of music did you guys listen to? Rock and roll? Music that was popular then. Yeah, rap and all that. Uh huh. Did you have after-school activities? Like, after school, did you have baseball or basketball? What, what kind of, what kind of after-school activities did you have? Did you have any school act, activities after school for the students? Mm -mm. Just went nope. to school and went home? Well, of course, I had work to do for the next day and everything, but the students went home. On the bus. <laughs> Has transportation changed? Has the transportation changed the way your students uh, got to and from school? I don't know. You think they rode bikes more then, or you think they took school buses or walked more? Well, they had some school buses. They had some. Some school buses. Not as many as they have now, of course. Yeah. Did they have numbers on the school buses? Like, were the school buses numbered? They had names on them, didn't they? I don't know. Did they? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have any pictures or other memorabilia that you have any pictures. pictures and things? I think the pictures that they have is the one of you and father that they have at the school. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the portrait. Yeah. And then if we could, you know, maybe, you know, you ask that question about the, the history of her history and the, maybe the history of both her and mother. I mean, her and my, my father. Her and my mother, that's good, isn't it? Her and my, uh, my father, maybe I could go with that real quick for you. That might help you a little bit. That, um, my father came to the district, which also the school's named after, uh, in 1943. Uh, his first teaching was in uh, Alt, Colorado, which is about 15 miles east of Fort Collins, and then went to, uh, to Erie. I don't know where you know where Erie, Colorado is. It's down towards Denver. Uh, taught there a few years, and then wound up going to uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And then when he came back in 1943, uh, he came to Lincoln Junior High School. As a, uh, as a coach and as a physical education teacher. 
and then from Lincoln Junior High School, then he went to Fort Collins High School and uh, stayed at Fort Collins High School as a, uh, as a teacher and as a coach until Poudre High School opened up, and that was the first, second high school that was ever built in Fort Collins, and that opened up in 1964. And he stayed at Poudre High School until 1976, and that's the year that he retired. And so if you go from 43 to uh, 76, uh, you know, that's about 33 uh, years that he spent in the, in the school district here, uh, Poudre School District. Uh, when my mother started teaching, uh, she uh, started teaching at uh, Harmony Elementary School, which is on Harmony Road and now uh, is a private school. And uh, she was in charge of, uh, I believe, sixth grade over there and in charge of their Christmas program. I can remember as a very uh, young, sixth grade. Uh, yeah, as a very young boy uh, going there and watching the Christmas program and uh, very impressed with that. And then from there, um, I think she was at LaPorte Avenue for a while. And then when Bennett opened up, uh, which was behind their house, or they lived on Shield Street, she talked about. And then she remained at Bennett until she retired, same time my father did in 1976. <laughs> and so that's kind of the history of the family and uh, where they came from in their teaching years here in Poudre School District. Also, um, it might be note that, you know, you talked about, uh, you know, my job here and what I'm doing. But I also have a sister that's uh, in education. Uh, in the school system, and that's uh, her I nickname. taught them yeah. folk dancing, and they went different places. And yeah, in fact, I was part of that folk dancing that yeah. you used to teach. That's right. We did go different places. <laughs> and in fact, we even did some things for the Kiwanis Club. Remember, we had that square dancing uh, thing at the Kiwanis Club that we, uh, we won that contest that night with a couple squares of people <laughs> and did all those things. But now also, I was you know, saying about my sister, uh, uh, her name is Louise, but uh, everybody calls her Dee Dee because uh, that's some of my fault. I couldn't pronounce Louise when I was very young. I was th three years old, and so I nicknamed her Dee Dee, and her name <laughs> is Dee Dee Fulton, and she's a fifth grade teacher at O'Day, and she's been in the district, uh, I think this is her 27th year in the district, and so she's also an elementary teacher. So, And my grandmother, we can go on and on about uh, history of teachers. My grandmother was a, was a teacher also, so uh, that's kind of the family and, and what we've been doing, and it, it kind of runs in the family here. Did you, do you remember any music class, like classes for music and art? You know, we had, yeah, we did, but we, we didn't have very many. I don't think we had the, uh, the opportunity as much as you did. I, uh, I don't remember any of the, of the singing in choirs uh, in the elementary schools when I was going through the art. We always had art. Uh, when we got into junior high, uh, then we seemed to have branched out into the... Where's my uh, course? It's right over here. Mm -hmm. And then we branched out and then had art and then we had music and then so we got higher. But in elementary school, we didn't have all the opportunities and all the different specials that uh, you guys have now. So did you have choir in junior high and high school? Yeah, I was, and I was part of that. Um, I, I also uh, did a few plays. I was in some plays when I was going to school and, and loved the fine arts uh, in school. I played athletics, so I was very lucky that I could do almost a lot of things. I, I did a lot of things in school, and, and I think that really helps you if you can do a lot of things and get involved in your schools. Thanks for coming. That's all the time we have for now. Okay, thank you for inviting us.